Hello everybody, my name is Emily and today I'm going to talk about adaptations of Homer's stories. And I have two copies here, the Iliad and the Odyssey. So I have always been familiar with these stories ever since I was in high school and I've studied them in college and I love Homer's stories. I have yet to read the Iliad entirely all the way through though. I will say that, but I love the vastness and the imagination behind these stories. Recently I have read a few adaptations of them and I'm going to review those books today. There are two books that I've read recently that retell both the Iliad and the Odyssey in different ways and that those two books are The Penelope Ad by Margaret Atwood and The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. And I love how shiny this cover is. Um, both of these stories retell either the story of the Odyssey or of the Iliad from a perspective of a character that isn't as well developed in the story itself that you see from Homer. So to begin with, the Penelope ad. This story follows Penelope's story. If you didn't know, Penelope is the wife of Odysseus and they meet briefly and they get married but pretty soon after he goes to fight in the Trojan War and I really liked the beginning of the story and how the character Penelope was developed when you read the Odyssey you don't see that much of her you kind of you kind of see what she's doing and how she's interacting with the guests in her home while Odysseus is away and all of the suitors have come forth to claim her for marriage and she is hiding in her rooms most of the day. Um, she does that weaving trick to gain some time, but you don't know that much about her personality or what her take on the events are. If anything, I think you learn more about Odysseus' son, Telemachus, if that's how you pronounce it, I don't know, than Penelope herself. What this book does is it makes her feel like a real character. And I liked that about it. It also answers the big question, and I think this is a question that Margaret Atwood had when she read the Odyssey of, and this is a spoiler, if you haven't read the Odyssey, why the maids were killed in the end of the Odyssey. So, I don't want to give anything away, but the end of the Odyssey is very violent. When Odysseus comes home, he has these maids hanged after he kills all the suitors. And you want, we wonder why. What did they do to deserve that? Why did it happen? And Atwood is trying to answer this question for you in the book. It's a short story. It, it's about 200 pages. And something very interesting that she does is she has a chorus line of maids telling their own story. So she develops them as a chorus like you would see in Greek plays. And I really liked that, like playing homage to the history. Um, what I will add also is that I liked the beginning of the story when you're meeting Penelope for the first time and you're getting to know her and you see her meet Odysseus and go to Ithaca and kind of get into the swing of things. But once this story is telling uh, what you see in the Odyssey, I don't know if it's because I know the Odyssey so well or it's because the, the emphasis on the story kind of changed a little bit. Um, but there was something lacking there for me. Uh, I don't know what it was, and I can't put it in words, but overall I really enjoyed this book. It helped, it, it gave an insight and a perspective into the character of Penelope, which was fun. The other book that I have retells Achilles' story and the Iliad, and that is The Song of Achilles. I loved this book. I just finished reading it yesterday, and it's a five-star book for me. Um, this book 
tells the story also from a lesser known character that you don't get to know as well in the Iliad, and that is Patroclus, who, and I haven't read the Iliad in depth, but he is the friend, the, the best friend of Achilles. And you hear his story from the time when he was a young boy to when he first met Achilles, you see them growing up together, and in the end of the book, the reader is taken with them to Troy and gets to see that 10 year long siege um, and what happens to those characters. I really liked this, the perspective of this story. Patroclus was a really great character. He's very sympathetic and I was just talking to one of my friends who has just read this book. Once the battle begins in Troy, Achilles and Agamemnon do not get along. They, they fight a lot. Uh, and part of it is Achilles and his hubris and his pride. And he refuses to fight the war because of different things and different... Um, unresolved conflict that he has. So it's very interesting to have the character of Achilles who in this story he's he's very godlike. He's a demigod and he's not very human. But you're seeing him through the eyes of someone who loves him and I think it changes your perspective a little bit and it makes him a little bit more human. And I really liked seeing that perspective. Something else that I thought was interesting that Madeline Miller does is you see the epithets all throughout Homer's writing. Each character has one, and Achilles often is called swift footed. And in this story, his fighting style is described as him being so fast, nobody can keep up with him, and everything that he's doing is with speed and precision. And I didn't realize that until after I had finished reading the book that she kind of took that epithet and that description of Achilles and she illustrated it in a different way than you would see in one of the epics that tells his story in her own story. And I liked that. I liked how she kind of developed descriptions of these characters that you read about in the Iliad. I know that Madeline Miller also has the new book Circe that has just come out, which is also developing another character that you meet in the Odyssey. I, I keep holding books up over here, but I feel like I should over here because this blank space, but. Circe is one of the people that Odysseus comes across when he's trying to get home. And she's kind of an impediment to him, but in this retelling, you get to actually hear her story, which I think could be very interesting because she's portrayed as more of a villain in the Odyssey. But um, I can imagine in the book that you're, you can empathize with her more when you see her whole story told. So I'm excited to get my hands on that one and read it. And if any of you have good recommendations for retellings of Greek myths or stories that contain Greek mythology somehow, I would love to hear them because I just love these stories. I love um, Greek myths so much. It's very fun. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.